Samantha Wills, former jewelry designer, international entrepreneur, and now best-selling author. Welcome oh. to Nine Honey. <laughs> thank you so much. That's a new intro, so thank you. You like it? I know. So, Of Golden Dust actually hit stores tomorrow. How are you feeling? I'm. I thought I would be nervous, but um, so the book was meant to come out this time last year. So I've kind of had a year to, you know, make peace with the stories and, you know, so I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited for her to be out in the world <laughs> and um, to find where she's meant to, to be. So I'm excited. I absolutely love the honesty in your book. Yes, you talk about the incredible business highs, but you also reveal the mental toll it took and your battle with anxiety. Do you think more high profile people need to peel back that layer of perfection? Absolutely. And I think, you know, in this time that we're in, it is such an age of perceived perfection. And it's, um, you know, people are, are scared to kind of show up, not, you know, um, not not perfect, but just not with everything together. And I think that the more that we can talk, you know, about the realities of it, you know, you pop onto Instagram and, and, you know, no one's afraid to post about, you know, their health journey or their workout and things like that. But if you think about that in, in the sense of the mind, like where are we talking about mental health in that way? So I'd love to see, um, you know, that conversation normalized much more. Absolutely. So it is your book, but I kind of felt like it was opening your diary, particularly the part where you talked about finding out your partner had been cheating on you multiple times. I swear it took my breath away and I felt like I was on the floor sobbing with you. Why did you think it was important to include personal lows as well as professional lows? Well, I think at the time my career was, you know, very, you know, on this trajectory that was very public. I'd signed a lot of, um, you know, big contracts that I kind of had to show up for. And, you know, from the outside looking in, it, it looked like a sparkling run. Um, so I think it was really important to share those in a way that, you know, you know, here's what was actually happening. Here's what it took to peel myself up off the, you know, the hotel floor and show up every day through that time. And I think, you know, especially in small business, the, the world doesn't stop when we're grieving, whether that's, you know, whatever type of grief that is. So to share those, those real moments, I think, is so important in, in a human element. Now, I think the biggest message that I took away from your book is that you have to listen to your body. You didn't. I don't. No. I think, I hope that this is something that people, when they read it, they actually stop and do listen. Tell me a bit about uh, the fact that you push through massive health issues, including endometriosis. Yeah, it's, uh, and I don't think it's an uncommon story. You know, I, I shared a little bit about it on Instagram uh, when, when I went through the surgery and so many, like, like when I say so many, I'm like thousands of women message me saying I do the exact same thing. And I think especially as women, we're so um, conditioned to kind of just push through and be like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll get to that later. It's, it's kind of at the bottom of the to-do list. Um, for me, it was, you know, searing pain um, with my monthly cycle. It just continued to get worse. I jump on Google and, you know, self-diagnose myself that, oh, no, it's all fine. This is, you know, as you get older, this happens. And then I think, you know, sometimes the universe just, you know, slaps you around to get your attention. And it got to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore. And, you know, I found out there was two orange-sized fibroids and stage four endometriosis and saw myself in, in an operating theater not long after. So, um, you know, I truly believe our body is always trying to get our attention. She whispers and whispers till she, you know, gets fed up with us ignoring her and then she starts to scream. So that comes in the form of, of health, in, in burnout, in, in you know, tiredness, in, in hunger, anything. It, it's always trying to talk to us, but we just, for some reason, don't listen to her all the time.